Good day, my schoolers. My name is Abiola, and this is my school channel. Remember, in this channel, you'll be joining me to solve the jam beating past question for the subject biology in the year 2012. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel and in this video segment we are solving questions 1 to 17. So join me as we start with question number 1. Which of the following is most advanced in the evolutionary trend of animals? So let's start with option A, liver fluke. It belongs to the phylum of platyhemites, you know, the others like uh, planaria, the others like liver fluke itself, then tapeworm, tenia solio for instance, okay? They have organs and organ system. Of course, they have a um, digestive system as well, but it's just um, quite simple. On the scale of development or advancement, I will put them list based on these options. Then let's go to the next one. We are talking about earthworm. So earthworm, of course, belongs to the phylum of annelidans. All right. So um, of course, they have a um, true body cavity, okay, compared to this. All right. So I will just uh, put a stop on earthworm. Then let's look at snails. Okay. Snails belongs to the phylum of mollusca. All right. Uh, of course, they show a more advanced kind of system. Um, we can talk about a number of them being marine. In nature that is um, aquatic habitat of course so but if we take a look at um, cockroach option D okay at first it belongs to the phylum of the arthropodas and that is the largest phylum in the animal kingdom again cockroach belongs to the class insecta and these are widespread and well adapted and this can be due to certain features that they possess um, take for instance they are they are segmented um, bodies, they are, of course, they are jointed limbs that allow them to make complex movements. They are well-developed um, digestive system, specialized respiratory system, and what have you. So this can give an account to cockroach as being the most advanced in the evolutionary trend of animals. So I present option D to you for cockroach. Question 2. Which of the following is the lowest category of classification? So when we look into the hierarchy of living organisms, we talk about kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genius, and species. So of course, that is from the highest to the lowest classification. Of course, the species is the lowest of the classification. So option B is the correct option. Three. Plants that show secondary growth are usually found among the what? Okay, so when you talk about secondary growth, you are talking about um, a kind of growth that occurs um, due to cell division in the cambia, all right? And um, this is this actually occurs to thicken, all right, for thickening, uh, usually around the stems and the roots, okay? And of course, when you talk about primary growth, it occurs um, during cell division, talking about the tips of um, the stem and what have you okay this is just for elongation primary growth elongation secondary growth thickening all right so let's go through the options together when we talk about talophytes we are talking about algae okay or simple green plants like your filamentous parodura when you come to pteridophytes we are talking about ferns they are land plants that have um, stem roots and leaves okay so when we now come to monocotyledons and dicotyledons okay this falls to the um this permatophytes all right so um uh, monocots in short you can just take it simply all cereals are monocots monocots do not um go through secondary growth okay this happens with dicots so the correct option is option d for dicotyledons question four the fungi are distinct group of eukaryotes mainly because they have what? Okay, so when you talk about uh, eukaryotic cell, you're talking about a complex setup, you're talking about um, a well-defined nucleus, and we are also talking about presence of organelles. Okay, so um, let's now examine um, reasons or a particular reason why fungi are distinct group of eukaryotes. 
Number one, is it the presence or formation of sports? This is not just peculiar to them. You can find that when it comes to Kingdom Protista as well as in Kingdom Form Guys. So this does not uh, make them distinct. Okay, let's look at option B, no chlorophyll. Okay, this of course is very correct because we know that most fungi they are saprophytic in nature, uh, while some are um, parasitic in nature. This is due to the absence of chlorophyll, and they have to obtain food. All right, so um, let's look at option D um, asexual and sexual reproduction. This is not just peculiar to them because we know that fungi can reproduce asexually and sexually, but this is also common among talophytes algae okay they can reproduce sexually or asexually that is kingdom plantae talophytes to be precise so the peculiar thing or the distinct thing about them is the absence of chlorophyll so option b is the correct option do not forget to use the link in the description below it's going to take you to the my school website there you can download the my school mobile app for your smartphones or the my school software for your laptops and desktops so join us to solve question five an arthropod that is destructive at early stage, early stage of its life cycle, is caterpillar for butterflies. Okay, so we know that butterfly, mosquitoes, and bees, they are fluid feeders. Of course, we can find them proboscis here. So um, the correct option here is option A for butterfly, not the adult stage, but the early life, um, the early stage of its life cycle in the form of caterpillar. Okay, so the correct option here is option A for butterfly. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get notified immediately we upload the next video content just for you. Six, an animal body that can be caught along its axis in any plane. Emphasis, any plane. To give two identical parts is said to be what? Is said to be radially symmetrical. Okay, and you can find this um, among the um, cholenterates. Okay, you talk about um, jellyfish, you talk about um, um, sponge, uh, you talk about jellyfish, you talk about I dry talk about sea anemones and what have you. Okay, so this is common to um, cholenterates. All right. So when you talk about bilateral symmetrical, you are talking about when you cut along its axis, just in a plane, one plane. Okay, and it's going to give you two identical halves. Okay, the left and the right side, of course. And you can use certain terms in this kind of um, setting. You talk about the anterior, the posterior. You talk about the dorsal and the ventral. Okay, so uh, a very good example, we are talking about um, platyemitis, flatworms. Okay, you can also bring out cow as an example here. Yeah? So when you look at um, asymmetrical, we are looking at a few primitives like um, the phylum porifera sponges. Okay, when you say something is symmetrical, that means um, one side is a very good half that mirrors the other side. So the correct option is option A for radially symmetrical. Question seven. Which of the following possesses mammary glands? So we are talking about which of these is a mammal? Will is a mammal, gives birth to its young, alive, okay? It has uh, four, even though it's very sparse. And of course, milk to its young ones, okay? You can see this nipples outrightly like that uh, when it is being um, nudged by the, uh, by the calves, okay? The nipples are being covered by the mammary slits, okay? And that is where you now see it breastfeeding its young with milk okay so the correct option is option b for will question eight the feature that links birds to reptiles in evolution is the possession of words okay let's just make this very simple you can find scales present um when it comes to reptiles as well as in beds when you check their feet it's scaly all right so the correct option is option d for scales Question 9. Counter shading is an adaptive feature that enables animals to do or to remain undetected. Okay, you will have their dozer parts being um, dark colored, okay, and the ventral parts um, like light colored. Okay, this is this actually is very necessary in a kind of environment where light comes from the top, just like for fishes. Okay, so um, this, of course, counter shading is for them to remain undetected both by predators from beneath or like um, beds from above 
when you talk about the fish okay um also talking about revenue undetected you can find that also with um, disruptive coloration but based on the option and the question giving us counter shading is an adaptive feature that enables animals to remain undetected so option b is the correct option 10. which of the following plant structures lack a waterproof cortical so you talk about cortical you're talking about a waxy layer or covering okay it can be found on the leaf on the young stem and of course when you talk about fruits okay uh, this is just to prevent water loss okay so when you look at the roots of uh, the roots of a um, plant okay you know this root should not have this um, waterproof cortical because roots absorb water by osmosis from the soil okay and the cell membrane acts as a selectively permeable membrane okay and also it's also uptake um, other minerals okay by active transport so the roots should not have this waterproof cortical so where the correct option lies or the answer lies is in option c for roots level in the mammalian male reproductive system the part that serves as a passage for both urine and semen is the what okay so when you talk about semen you're talking about combination of the seminal fluid which is secreted from the combined activities of the seminal vesicle um, the carpus gland the prostate gland okay so seminal fluid plus sperm gives you the semen okay so that particular part okay that serves as a passage for both urine and the semen is the urethra okay um when you talk about the urethra this is a narrow tube a narrow tube that connects the kidney to the urinary bladder and here in the urinary bladder that is where urine is stored okay so the stored urine now can move to the exterior part of the body through the urethra as well as the semen okay urethra is found um just along or inside the penis so the correct option here is option a for urethra question 12 in plants which of the following is required in minute quantities for growth so we are talking about trays minor or non-essential so we are looking at copper zinc molybdenum boron and uh, manganese okay so these are required in just um, small quantities when you look at potassium phosphorus we are talking about the major or the essential um, elements okay so the correct option here is option a for copper don't forget to click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the MySQL website. There you can ask your questions right now. And within moments, our solution providers are going to help you out. So whatever questions you are having, you can ask using that link. Okay, so join me as we solve the next question. Which of the following organism is both parasitic and autotrophic? Okay, we know that sundew is a carnivorous plant. Please, carnivorous to be very precise. Um, tape worm, we are talking about um, the phylum of platyhermitis. Okay, and um, these are parasitic in nature okay for instance your tenia solium solium uh -huh. when we look at the uh, rhizopods and nigricans we are looking at fungi your bread mold okay so loranthos of course you are looking at something around um, the mistletoe okay um you know these are partially parasitic the reason is that when you consider their autotrophic nature they can manufacture their food by photosynthesis but they are parasitic partially parasitic because they need water and mineral salt which they take from their host plant so the correct option is option b for loranthos it is very possible that you have better steps, explanations, or contributions to make, please. We are very attentive. All you need to do, use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the solution, explanation, or contributions you like to make. 14. A function of the hydrochloric acid produced in the human stomach during digestion is to do what? Okay, so let's take it from the beginning, you know, the tylene in our saliva, okay? At first, we are talking about an alkaline um, environment or an alkaline medium, okay? Um, this tylene, of course, you know, it works on um, cooked starch, converting it to complex sugars, okay? So on getting to the stomach, you know, the, the stomach, we are talking about two enzymes, the pepsin and the renin. Now, what the acid does is to neutralize the um, tylene or to stop the action of the tylene, okay? And it also provides an acidic medium for the functionality of pepsin, 
okay so when you now consider option a neutralize the effect of bile no on the other way okay um bile actually neutralize the effect of the hcl that is found in the chine when it moves to the next uh, parts okay for um, activities to occur and as well aside from the bile neutralizing the acid it also provide an alkaline medium for the pancreatic juice to act so the correct option here is option c to stop the action of tylen found in saliva question 15 which of the following is a poly okay saccharide many saccharides uh, many monosaccharides so uh, when you look at um, the monosaccharide we have here we have glucose other monosaccharides like your fructose your galactose okay your sucrose and your maltose these are disaccharides okay um, glucose is from uh, glu uh, sucrose rather is from um, glucose and um, fructose okay that gives you your sucrose why for galactose we are talking about glucose plus glucose why cellulose is of course a polysaccharide many monosaccharides so other example of um, polysaccharide looking at starch so the correct option is option d for cellulose question 16 in the kidney of mammals the site of ultra filtration is the bowman's capsule you know as blood um, flows through the glomerulus okay um, you know certain uh, molecules small molecules like water like urea like mineral salts like um, plasma solutes and sugar okay will pass through this and you know we are talking about a one cell thick wall of um, the capillaries and the bowman's capsule into the capsular space okay and high pressure here is required so this also acts as a filter ultra filtration against bigger molecules like um, plasma proteins um, blood cells and what have you so ultra filtration takes place here why are the loop of ellen you are looking at selective reabsorption so the correct option here is option b for bowman's capsule question 17 which of the following is involved in secondary thickening implants so option a the presence of cholenchyma negates this we are talking about secondary thickening this is found in um for young plants okay so we are not this is this is out all right vascular cambium of course is correct but not only all right um, let's look at the cork cambium and the sclenchyma uh, we know that the the function of the sclenchyma is far from what we are talking here so what we're looking at here so we look at option d the vascular cambium and the cork cambium this is what we are looking for so the correct option here is option d right here we've come to the end of this video segment but there are definitely more interactive and educative content to come all you need to do is to hit that like button also click on the subscription button and always tap on bell notifications so you can get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you